Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Way Podcast, where we talk about Yahweh and how to live life his way. My name is Victoria, and I'm so glad you have stumbled across this podcast. Y'all, first of all, I just need to apologize for my appearance at the top of this episode. I have on no makeup, so I literally threw on my blue light glasses to, like, take away the fact that I don't have on any makeup. And I have on another hat, y'all. But here's the thing. I just feel like when I wear super just, like, t-shirt, sweatpants, a hat, and some glasses always elevates it just a little bit. So, I'm like, I literally wear the same pants every episode. But these are my favorite lounge pants, okay? And if you don't know, I record these in my house. So, it's so hard for me to, like, get dressed for these podcasts, you know? But anyways, then I was like, you know what? It doesn't even matter how I look. What matters is is the word of God being communicated properly. That's literally all that matters. So, yes, I look a little crazy and balmy this episode, but we're going to ignore it, okay? Um, Before we get into today's episode, please like and subscribe on YouTube. Please leave me five stars on the podcasting platform. And... I forget what else. Um, also, if you're watching, I think I can't really see right now. But when I edit, I'll be able to like look back. But I think the spotlight is like right in my glasses. So it looks like I don't have eyeballs. But anyways, we'll see when we edit. I might cut this out if this is not accurate. But if it is accurate, I'll keep it in. All right, y'all. Anyways, that's so crazy. I literally had to apologize for my appearance at the top of the episode. This is why you should go on the podcasting platform and not just use YouTube. Anyways, let's get right into today's episode. All right, people. Introducing our new series called Schemes of the Enemy. So for the month of February, every week, we will be going over a different tactic of Satan. And I'm very excited about this. And I love calling him out because he's a loser. And he's trying to kill us, literally. It's in the Bible. So this month, we are going to be calling him out and calling out his schemes so we can know and recognize what he's doing, when he's doing it, what to do when it occurs, and all that jazz. So the first thing I want to talk about is this episode is titled Satan is a Liar. And... I want to talk about before we get into the meat, why I'm doing this series. So I was praying about all the series that I wanted to do. And I have a bunch like literally lined up for like the next, probably like through the summer. And I wanted to do, to do this one on the top of the year because I, I do have a passion for, I want people, this is almost the point of this podcast. Like, I don't want any child of God to one, live a boring life, um, not live a full life, not unpack and and unravel all that God has for you. Um, But I don't want you to live an ignorant Christian life to where we think everything is rainbows and unicorns and there's no active enemy, you know? And I also feel like, a word over over 2024 that I got, which is a few episodes back, in order for people to unlock what God has for you this year, I do feel like you're going to have to fight Satan some. And that is just a walk of a believer. And so I would love to just call him out at the top of the year so we can get ahead of him and not, we can be on offense, okay? And not be on defense. And I was doing all the things. And um, when I was going through just all the research for this series, I'm like, what? There are so many Christians out here fighting blindly. Like, we don't even know what we're fighting. We don't even know how to fight. We don't even know why we're fighting. And, y'all, the best way to get ahead of Satan, any any battle, y'all, any soldier, whatever war, the way that they beat their opponents is literally by knowing their opponents. 
Like they study their opponents. They, any game, any um, sports game. I literally was a college athlete. So I'm walking, living, breathing proof of studying our opponent, film hours of film before going and traveling to our opponent to beat them. You have to study your adversary so you know what's coming. That's just math. And the same thing goes for Satan. We have to study him to know when he's attacking, what darts he's throwing, and what tactics he is doing. So this episode is called Satan is a Liar. This whole thing is about how Satan is a liar, and we're going to get into it just in a second. But I also wanted to read this verse. It says, Ephesians 6, 12. I've, I've used this a lot on this podcast, but for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Okay? Ephesians 5, 11 says, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Okay. So this is what we are doing. And y'all, I'm about to go off. Let me, let me calm down. Let me calm down. So here is what this episode is all about. Yes, we know Satan is a liar, right? But here is the craziest part. A lot of us are over here letting Satan whisper lies in our ears, right? But what we are not even understanding or grasping is that whenever Satan whispers a lie to you, he's actually revealing the truth. What I mean by that is Satan's native tongue is lying. He is a liar that is literally in his character like he's a liar that's who he is and so any lie that he is telling you it is actually revealing the truth and I wrote down some examples because some of y'all are like Victoria what do you mean he's actually telling the truth he's not telling the truth but he's revealing the truth there's a difference okay so common lies I've maybe struggled with, or I know a lot of people struggle with in the Christian realm. Okay. God has nothing in store for me. That is lie number one. Okay. The opposite of that is God actually has so much in store for you, immeasurably more than you could ever imagine, even come up with in your own brain. Right. So the lie is God has nothing in store for my life. But the truth is he has so much in store for your life that you cannot even grasp it. You don't even know. You couldn't even think of it if you wanted to because he has that much in store for your life. Another common lie we believe is no one will ever love me, especially if you're single. I know you're in this boat. No one will ever love me. The truth is that actually... There is a God who loves you so freaking much, like loves you, knows your name, calls you by name. That is the truth. It is that no one will ever love you. That could not be further from the truth. The God of the universe actually does. He loves you. That's insane. That should be enough. Another lie is the world does not need you here anymore. That is the lie that is being whispered to you. There's no point in you being here. Why am I even here on earth? Say That cannot be, oh my gosh, I'm telling y'all that literally screams Satan. Why am I here? What is the point of me being here? I, I don't think there's the earth needs me here. The truth is that until God stops putting breath in your lungs, the world needs you here. There is a purpose for you here. There is a purpose for your life. There is a reason why God, I don't think we realize y'all that God genuinely has the power to literally zap us dead this very instant, can stop our hearts. We cannot wake up in the morning. Like I don't think that we understand the power our God 
holds. When he says it's time to go, it's time to go. And he's taking you. Like, there's no if they answer buts about it. Like, there's no getting around it. And so the fact that God sees you fit to continue to put breath in your lungs every morning, you li literally open your eyes. Do you know how much of a gift and a privilege that is? And until God stops giving you that gift of waking up, there is a reason why you're here. There is a purpose as to why you're here. There's a purpose that your feet are on the ground today. There's a purpose that God woke you up. That is the truth, not the lie that is being whispered, that is saying the earth would be better off if you were not here. That is nothing but demons. I literally feel it. That is nothing but Satan, y'all. That is not God. That is a lie. Another lie, common, common lie that we are seeing here in the 20, what century are we in? 21st century? I don't even know. Witchcraft. Satan is lying to you. Okay. He is telling you that this witchcraft is not harmful. He is telling you that this is the way and the truth and the life. He is telling you there is power in it when there's actually none at all. He is telling you that whatever you are seeking, going the witchcraft route, the dark route, the tarot card route, the uh, what else is there? Psychics, which the spells, all of that. He's telling you that is not harmful when that is literally, oh my gosh, y'all, the truth is the opposite in that it's actually very harmful and forget all of it i think the biggest thing especially as believers oh the horoscopes thank you holy spirit the horoscopes the astrology all of that crap harmful and i think the most harming part of it all is that it separates you from god point blank period he's very clear about staying away from those things He's very clear about how harmful and demonic and satanic it is. And ultimately, y'all, that is what sin is. It separates us from God. So if you are walking in the dark stuff like that, you are every time you partake in those activities, you are separating yourself from God. What more would Satan want? Every time you are dabbling in witchcraft, this man is cheering and his little demon cheerleaders right next to him with their pom-poms cheering you on to keep going because they know that this is separating you from God. But the lie is that this isn't harmful. What do you mean this is separating you from? No, like, did you see when you did that spell that that happened? It worked. What do you mean this? there's, there's no power? Y'all, Satan is a gaslighter. Do y'all know that Satan is the OG gaslighter? I know that's more of a modern term, but it's an old practice. He was doing it in the garden, y'all. The definition of gaslighting, this is crazy, this is crazy. The definition of gaslighting is gaslighting someone means manipulating their perception of reality so that they begin to question their own sanity. Do I need to say more? L let me just read it again. I feel like the Holy Spirit wants me to read it one more time, just in case this went over your head the first time. Definition of gaslighting. Gaslighting someone means manipulating their perception of reality so that they begin to question their own sanity. In the garden, Adam and Eve, get the apple. God tells them clear instructions. Do not eat from this tree for when you eat from it, you shall surely die. Here comes the serpent, Satan. You won't surely die. Are you sure that's what he meant? Gaslighting Eve into getting that girl to eat the apple. And what does she do? She eats the apple and then walks her butt over to Adam and feeds him the apple. And y'all, there are so many 
ways that the that the devil gaslights us into believing something that is not actually reality or real or truth and we know that it's not truth right but he gaslights us into thinking like we start questioning ourselves like maybe the bible isn't true maybe the bible is outdated who even wrote the bible i'm telling y'all Oh my, I can literally, I'm getting, I'm about to start getting goosebumps because I can literally see Satan. Like I have a vision of in my head of him just in people's ears, y'all. And it's nothing but lies because Satan is a liar and his native tongue is lying. Go back to the examples. Okay. When I said you were leaving, God has nothing in store for you, but God actually has abundantly more than you can ever think of in store for your life. There's no need for you to be on this earth. Well, actually, God is waking you up every morning and putting breath in your lungs, has plans to prosper you. Therefore, there is a reason for you to be on this earth. Uh, the other lie, no one will ever love me. Well, actually, there is a God that loves you more than you can ever imagine, right? I didn't say any Bible verses with those truths combating those lies. But every single truth combating the lies that y'all are believing that I just named are all scripture. They're all scripturally based truths. And so the literal opposite, are y'all are y'all picking up the equation? The literal opposite of Satan's lies is truth. This is how, when I'm literally feeling the presence of the Lord, this is how, when he speaks, even though he's telling lies, the truth is revealed. Let me read Matthew chapter four, y'all. I had this on deck because like I said, everything that I just combated those common lies with were truths and they lined up with scripture. Matthew chapter four. This is a very common piece of scripture that we all teach on. But here is the thing. It doesn't matter how common a piece of scripture is. It doesn't make it any less powerful because the word of God has power and it is active and alive. Matthew chapter four. I'm reading verses one through 11. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to tempt him. And said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Verse five, then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against this stone. Jesus said, it is also written, do not put your Lord God to the test. Verse eight, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you. He said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord, your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and the angels came and attended him. This is piece of scripture is always a reference because it's powerful. Jesus, Satan in Jesus's face in his most vulnerable state, just got done fasting 40 days and 40 nights. What does the devil do? Comes and starts whispering lies to Jesus. Whispering temptations to Jesus. What does Jesus do? Literally his his battle, his, what do you call it? Weapon is literal scripture. 
the truth. Scripture, y'all, it's the truth. That is what Jesus used to fight. And the very last verse says, then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. It's like scripture works. It's like it's actually true. And so, y'all, I am telling you, I'm trying not to scream, y'all. It's kind of late, but I'm telling you, please turn this episode off when it is over. Sit down with God. Identify every line you are believing and say the exact opposite. And I guarantee you, it will be scripture based. It will line up with scripture and it is the truth. Please, I am begging you, go sit with God, spend time with God, ask him to reveal things that you didn't even know was sitting, taking space, taking up room in your brain. Ask God to identify it all and literally say out loud the opposite. If you are believing the lie of, I have no friends, I am lonely. What is the opposite of that? You actually have friends, and you are not lonely. That's the literal opposite of that statement. And the Holy Spirit is not only our helper, but he's our friend. He he fills the void of the loneliness that we try to fill with other people, things, and substances. He is He is what fulfills us. That is the truth to that lie. If you are believing the lie of, if you are believing a lot of I'm a mistake, I'm I'm not pretty, I'm whatever, whatever. The truth is what you were actually made by a perfect God in his image and you were fearfully, wonderfully made. So what is that? What is that? Ephesians 2.10. There's the truth. That is the opposite of what you are believing. And so I'm telling you, please sit down with God and identify the lies that you have let take root in your brain from Satan and say the opposite. Curse it, rebuke it in the name of Jesus and stand firm on the truth. Literally say the truth out loud until you believe it every single freaking day. Anytime you're trying to root this this lie out and you feel Satan trying to push it back in, Satan, my father says X, Y, Z. I will not let you take root in my brain any longer. I rebuke these lies. What you are telling me, this is actually what it means. And this is actually what God says. And so I beg you, y'all, please go now. Turn this off. I'm not even done yet, but I don't even care. Turn this off and go spend time with God and identify it. And you will experience so much freedom because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. That is second Corinthians something. Don't even know. But again, it is the truth. It is scripture. So stop letting Satan take over your mind and feed you all these things that are actually not true. I wanted to end this episode with also telling you to go read your Bibles because yes, we can 100% identify the lie and literally say the opposite and it be the truth. But how much more powerful would it be for you to have the scripture lined up ready to go whenever Satan comes and tries to attack or spread lies? Not only do you know the truth, but you have the scripture to stand firm like God or Jesus had it in his back pocket in the wilderness. He said, it is written. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're saying because this is also written. Um, no, that's not right. This is what is written. So the fact that Jesus was that example for us, it's also so powerful. So go read your Bibles, y'all. Stop living again. I've said this so many times. Stop trying to live the Christian life without putting in the work. Go read your Bible. Go talk to God. 
And God wants you to process out loud, y'all. And so literally go talk to him, break it down, find the scriptures, do a deep dive on all the crap that you are believing that God never said. But anyways, that's the, that's the end, y'all. Go read your Bibles, go pray, go talk to God, go start fighting, y'all. Stop laying dormant to the devil. We need to fight. We be, oh Lord, I'm about to go off again. But we be so quick to go and raise our voices about things that don't even freaking matter, except the one thing that matters, which is Jesus Christ. And so stop, I mean, yes, go fight for rights and all that great stuff and justice woohoo but y'all fight the devil fight the devil with satan and your relationship with jesus stop just laying down and letting this man literally walk all over you stop being on defense you are supposed to be on offense so we need to start fighting stop wasting our time with all this stuff that is so empty and just don't even matter at the end of the day oh my gosh go fight go read your bibles go pray that's the end of this episode Thank you for making it to the end. And I will talk to y'all next week with another scheme of the enemy that I'm very excited to unpack. Okay, that's it. Okay, um, all right. I'm so awkward at the outros. How do I still not have this down? We're on episode like 64. Okay, bye. Bye.